the incredible power of the minor blues scale in its A shape position, shown here in the key of E minor. Let's demonstrate. A one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Swift Lessons for another blues rock lead guitar tutorial. In today's session, I'm going to be sharing with you some licks and concepts that you could apply to one of my go-to solo in positions, the minor blues scale in its A shape position. So once again, in the key of E minor, across all six strings, that gives us the frets 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 8, 9, 7, 9, 8, 10, 11, 7, 10. Now, what makes this one of my go-to solo in positions? Well, for starters, it's easy to play. These finger positions. All right, very, very comfortable. It's a little twist and turn here. But generally, I find this to be a very comfortable position. Second, the way the notes are distributed, it's very useful for adding in. double stop techniques. But perhaps the most important benefit of this solo and grip is its location on the fretboard. It's kind of sandwiched between all of these adjacent solo in positions that you can use to solo over top of a 1-4-5 progression. So let's say we're using the a shape position of the minor blues scale as our home base. I can easily add a little bit of major flavor to it by moving down a full step and access in the BB's box. Okay, in the key of E, that's fret six, five, seven, eight, if you wanna get a little gritty with it, five, and seven. Okay, so you're using that minor blue scale A shape position as home base. You wanna add some major flavor? All right, you got BB's box right behind it. Now, you also have the major pentatonic scale right in front of this solo and grip. So you can always slide up a full step and find the major pentatonic scale in its G-shaped position. 12, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 12, 9, 12. So now you can see if you can use those two scale positions in conjunction with one another. Okay, so many different possibilities there. Okay, now lastly, let's say you need to play over top of the five chord and the four chord in the key of E, which would be B7 and A7. Well, it just so happens that this minor blue scale that we're using for the home bass in its A-shaped position, it happens to overlap with the minor blue scale for the five chord, B minor blue scale. So it's very easy to scale hop between those two chords as the progression moves. And whatever you play over top of the five chord, you can take down a full step and play over top of the four chord. Okay, so now that you kind of understand those concepts, let's learn a full practice routine over a 12 bar blues in the key of E that puts all of these principles to work. Okay, very well done everybody. Now we're jumping into our practice routine, a complete solo over a 12 bar blues. We're gonna take it line by line, getting started with four measures of E dominant seven, played with a shuffle feel. Okay, these first four measures are gonna sound like this. A one, two, three, four, and... Right there at the end, that's us getting to line number two for the four chord change. 
Okay, so that began with a classic double stop lick. It looks and sounds like this. One more time, get it into your ear. Okay, so that began with the low E string open on beat one, then a double stop, seventh fret of the high E string, and the eighth fret of the B string. Bending that B string up a half step, the minor third going up to the major third. All right, from there we're gonna play. All right, ninth fret of the G string, pulling off down to seven. Ninth fret D, and then seven nine on the G string. That's one measure of music. All right, a classic lick that will work over both major and minor keys. All right, now the next lick in measure two is gonna sound like this. One more time. All right, so once again, hitting the low E string open. Then we're gonna slide up into this position, grabbing the 12th fret of the B string and the 10th fret of the high E string. We're gonna slide in and then alternate between those two notes. All right, so. Now notice how I'm using hybrid pick in there, my pick on the B string and my middle finger on the high E string. All right, then more double stops. Ninth fret high E string, 10th fret of the B string, twice. Kind of bending those up about a quarter step before going back to the seventh fret high E and the eighth fret B string for a nice slow bend. You put all that together and we have real slow. All right, now licks one and two together should sound like this. It's all about the timing. All right, now measure number three is just going to be a repeat of lick number one. And that gets us to this fourth measure of E dominant seven, a nice descending lick, very Steve Ray Vaughn-esque. All right, one more time. All right, so we're on the ninth fret of the G string, pulling off down to seven. All right, then to the ninth fret D. Then a hammer pull technique, seven, eight, seven. So far you have. All right, then 10th fret A string, back to seven, and then back to the 10th fret A with a slight bend. All right, then that's going to get you to the next line of music and that A7 chord, the four chord in the key of E. All right, you put all of line one together and it should sound like this. A one, two, three, four, E. E. All right, if you can play that, then you're ready to move into line number two. Okay, now moving on to line number two. Here, we're going to be abandoning the E minor pentatonic scale in its A-shaped position, our home bass, in exchange for that BB's box. This is going to sound great over the A7 chord because the BB's box in the key of E features a lot of the same notes that you would find inside the A chord and also in the A mixolydian scale. Okay, so line number two is gonna look and sound like this. Okay, so line number two started with two licks over the A7 chord. The first one's gonna look and sound like this. Okay, pretty simple. We're starting off striking the open A string. Then we're gonna slide up to the sixth fret of the G string, go to five on the B, and then back to six. All right, next we're bending. Seventh fret of the B string up a half step. Back to seven. You put that into the mix and we have. All right, now we're gonna end the lick and get ourselves to the next measure. We're playing five, seven, five with a hammer and pull off. Then six on the G, 
and then back to five. All right, you put that full lick together and we have. All right, now we need to get ourselves back to E7, so we're gonna descend. All right, very cool, very classic lick here. We're going chromatic, seven, six, five on the high E string. Then two bends on the B string eighth fret. And then we're gonna finish up five, six on the G, and then back to five. Resolving on that E note, the exact moment that the E7 comes back in to the progression. Okay, you put those two licks over A7 together and it should sound like this real slow. See if you can play along. All right, now we're back on the E7 chord where we can just recycle lick number one. Before getting into some triplets here on the fourth measure. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We're just alternating back and forth between the 12th fret of the B string and 10th fret of the high E string. The way you can look at it is we're playing 12, 10, 12, 10, three times in a row. 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10. 12, 10. Okay, so. Okay, put all four measures together and we have line two. Starting with the A7 chord. Okay, that gets us to line number three now, the five chord, going to the four chord, B dominant seven, A seven, and then E. Okay, so now that the five chord is coming in, we're going to visualize that B dominant seven chord. You can also visualize the B minor blues scale or the B major pentatonic scale as well. All right, we're gonna play the lick. A nice speedy lick just for those four beats on B dominant seven. So we're sliding up to the eighth fret of the G string, seventh fret B, then adding in some chromaticism. Nine, eight, seven on the high E string, then bending the B string 10th fret up before going to the seventh fret of the high E, the root note of the B chord. Okay, so. All right, then finally, we're going to the A7 chord where we're going to lift a lick right out of the repertoire of Eric Clapton. To get back to E7. Okay, so the open A string, sliding up to the sixth fret G string, five on the B, back to six, and then five back on the B. So just alternating between those two notes. All right, then just like before, we're going to walk chromatically, seven, six, five on the high E. Before bending the eighth fret B string twice, and then going back to the fifth fret of the B string, that E note, just as the E7 chord comes back in. So you put that lick together and we have. All right, now those two licks for the B7 and A7 chords together should sound like this, B7. Hopping scales to A. All right, now we're back on the E7 chord to finish up this solo. We're just going to recycle measures three and four. Where you can resolve down to the E note on the seventh fret of the low E string. All right, to close up shop. You put all of line three together and it should sound like this. Starting with the B chord. A7. E.
just like that. Now, let's put lines one, two, and three together. Okay, playing through our entire practice routine, it should sound like this real slow. See if you can play along. A one, two, three, four, and E. B and A and E All right, everybody, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it's gonna help you to diversify your soloing technique. Now, if you need a little extra guidance, remember you can always head over to patreon.com slash with lessons. There I have a guitar profile, a full PDF study guide, and also a backing track to help you along. Now, over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be a little less active as my wife, Natalia, and I are expecting our first baby. So wish us luck. Please send us as much positive energy our way as you can. And uh, I'll be back as soon as possible with some more videos. Until next time, this is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.